your hands and love the
day that will be. What a day that will be. The Bible says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. One of these days, and I don't believe it's very far away, but we're all, every one of us on the face of the earth is going to be stopped in our tracks. We're going to hear that, that distinctive sound of the trumpet blowing. Sun will stop shining, the moon turn blood red. But there in the sky, the clouds will part, and every eye shall behold him. What a day that will be. Praise God. I want that to be a happy day for me. I don't want that to be a scary day. I don't want that to be a horrible day. But I want that to be a happy day for me. Praise God. Amen. Appreciate being in the house of the Lord tonight. Seems like we have uh, a lot of empty chairs here. We need to do something about that in the beginning of Apostolic Church. We need to we need to fill these chairs up so much that when someone is missing, it don't look so obvious. Amen. What hurt y'all? What hurt y'all spread out a little bit? I know y'all love each other and try to stay close, but what hurt y'all to spread out a little bit? Change chairs. Amen. But anyhow got a special treat for you tonight. Amen. A young preacher, young evangelist. Amen. He was able to work it into his schedule to preach for us tonight. Amen. But Brother Aaron's going to preach for us tonight. We want him to come and uh, just obey the Holy Ghost. And uh, just to give you a heads up warning, he's got my iPad. So y'all just be prepared. Amen. Everybody say, God bless Brother Aaron. God bless Brother Aaron. Amen. I'm thankful to be in the house of God tonight. I'm just going to talk with y'all just for a little bit here tonight. If you'll join me. And uh, we're going to begin 
in the book of Matthew, chapter 18. This thought came to me just one day. I was just sitting down. You know, I just wasn't really doing nothing. And this thought just came to me out of the middle of nowhere. And so I opened up my Bible and, you know, I started studying. And, you know, I've had this for a long time. You know, and I thought it would leave me, but, you know, it hasn't. So I'm just going to, you know, talk about this thought that I've had. And we'll begin in chapter, the book of Matthew, chapter 18. Verse 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must need, where it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for, for thee to enter into the lot, halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. And uh, I was just thinking about that scripture and this, and you know, I just uh, want to talk about this for a little bit and the title may seem a little strange, but as we go on, I'll explain it more. The title of this message is going to be Keeping Your Mind on God. Let us all pray here tonight. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for standing for the word of God. You may be seated. Amen. I was just looking at this scripture. Like I said, it just came to me one day. And I was just, you know, sitting down. And, you know, I just started thinking. Out just the back of my head. Just all of a sudden I started thinking about, you know, how in a surgery world. The surgery, that word. You go in and the doctor tries to fix whatever's not working. I mean, there's this thing called transplants. Where if your heart or if your lung don't just stops working all of a sudden, there can be a transplant. And you can transplant anything in your body. You can take it out and put a brand new one in there. And I started thinking, you can take anything out of the body and put a new something in there a new kidney, a new heart. You can, you can have those transplants, but I started thinking, there's one thing that can't be taken out, and that's the mind. That's the brain. Your mind is your mind. You can't take your mind out, the brain, and take your brain and put another one in there because it's not your mind. You have your own thoughts. You have your own life. And I started to think about this, and, you know, I started to think, how many people in the world keep their mind on God? How many people in the world keep their mind on God? Your mind is constantly being distracted by the world. We go out there, and we walk, and our mind is constantly, the devil is tempting us temp with temptations. But are you getting those temptations out? Are you keeping your mind on God tonight? How many people keep their mind on God? I want to go on, if you want to read with me, to the next chapter in the Bible, next book, the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10. Mark Chapter 10, verse 46. Right here is a familiar verse of Scripture. It talks about Barnabas. And in verse 46, 
it says, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Barnabas, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. He was sitting on a side begging on the side of the highway, sitting there begging for money because he was blind. He couldn't work. He couldn't do anything. That's what the blind people did. They sat on the road and for a living, asking for money so maybe they got enough money to eat. Maybe they got enough, you know, scraps to get something. In verse 47 it says, And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He was setting down. And I, and I imagine many people went through there. But this particular day, something was different. They started saying that Jesus was coming through. Right. Now those people didn't think nothing about it. They just thought Jesus was coming through. But Barnabas had his mind on God. Right. He was thinking about it and he thought, if I just call on Jesus, right. if he can just hear me. Maybe he can heal me. He had his mind set on God. He had his mind set on being healed. If you have your mind set on it, it can happen. God can do anything. God can move the mountains. Don't give up. And they told him, Barnabas, they told him. I can just picture him saying, be quiet. That's Jesus. But he didn't be quiet. He didn't, he didn't quieten down. He got louder. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He, and they said, be, be quiet, you know, quieting down. That's Jesus that you're talking to. But he got louder. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He had his mindset on being healed. He had his mindset on God hearing him. He had his mind on God. And in verse 49, it says, And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Jesus heard him. Throughout that whole crowd, he heard that blind, that blind man, that blind beggar, calling for him, to have mercy on him, to heal him. Out of all those people, he heard that man. And it says that he, he got up and he took off his garment. Can you just imagine? That, was, that garment was a blind man's garment. They, they all wore them, the blind people, to know so that people wouldn't hurt them. Or, you know, they had to be careful with them. He's blind. He wore a garment. But I wonder what those people thought when Barnabas... When he got up, he took off, he took off that garment. Right. Right. He took off that sign of, being, of people seeing that he is blind. Why did he do that? I believe he knew that he had, that he had set his mind. That he took off that. He knew he was going to be healed. Because right. he, he knew that since he had his mind on God, right. since he didn't give up, and he didn't give up, but he didn't stop yelling louder and louder when the people told him to be quiet. He knew that he had his mind set on God long enough. He never gave up believing that he would be healed. Let me ask you something. If you were in that position and you were blind and you heard that Jesus was coming, would you have your mind set on God? Well, let me ask that question again. If those people were telling you to be quiet... Would you be quiet? I don't think so. I would be quiet. That's Jesus. Hey, did you hear me? That's Jesus walking through. Hey, if you were in that time, you would want to you would want to get Jesus' attention, wouldn't you? And people are telling you to be quiet. I don't think I'm gonna be quiet. My mind's set on God. My mind is on God. I don't care what people tell me to be. I'm not gonna be quiet when God's here. And let me tell you something, God's in this house. God, the same God in that time is in this house. We serve 
We praise. We worship. We walk with the same God today. And yet some of our minds are not set on God today. Is your mind set on God? Barnabas' mind was set on God. And he threw off that garment because he knew that he had had his mind set on God long enough that he would be healed. And in verse 51... It says, and Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. If you were blind and you had just gotten your healing, what would the other people think? That had told you earlier to be quiet. What do you think those people were thinking? How did he get healed? He had his mind set on God. Those people had told him to be quiet. But what do you think they thought when Bartimaeus walked away seeing Walked away without ever having to put that garment on again. What do you think they thought? I hope they thought, you know, maybe I should put my mind on God. I should stop thinking about this. I should stop thinking about that. Maybe I need to put my mind on God. We must just forget about all this other stuff. Maybe I should put my mind on God. Look what it did with Barnabas. He don't, he's not a blind man anymore. He can see. Well... What do you think them people thought when Bartimaeus walked away seeing? He wasn't blind anymore. Jesus had touched him because he had his mind set on God. Nothing was in his way. In the book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 43. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years which had spent all her living upon physicians. Neither could be healed of any. This story and this verse of scripture may sound familiar. You know, I looked at it, and it's this woman having an issue of blood, and it told us for how long? For 12 years. And she spent... All her living, she spent all her money on doctors, on physicians, and they couldn't heal her. For 12 years, she spent all that she had on trying to be healed. But Jesus came to her. He was walking through. And that woman, she heard that he was coming through. And there is this big crowd. And she had this issue of blood for 12 years. And Jesus, she heard that Jesus was coming through. She had her mind set on God. She had her mind setting on being healed. And in verse 44, it says, She came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. And that word stanced, I looked it up, and, it's, and it means stop or restrict. Her issue of blood stopped. Her issue of blood was gone. Those doctors and physicians for 12 years could not heal her. But God had just, but she had touched just the garment of God, and it healed her instantly. But in verse 45, it says, And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee. And sayest thou, Who touched me? They thought he was crazy. There's people all around him trying to get to him, touching him. And they were saying, Why are you saying who touched me? Why are you asking that? And there's multitudes of people coming through. And pressing against you. Why would she say who touched me? In verse 46 it said. And Jesus said somebody hath touched me. 
for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. After she had touched him, God knew that somebody had touched him because virtue had gone out of him. Something had left him. That woman had been healed. And after he asked, and after that woman knew that it was her, and that she was healed, she came to God and told him why she had touched him and how she had been healed immediately. And God said that her faith had made her whole to go in peace. Her mind was set on God. God seen that. After 12 years, she might have thought, you know, well, Jesus, most people thought, well, Jesus couldn't heal her. 12 years with this issue of blood, but one touch, she was healed. Why? Because that's Jesus. She was healed immediately. She had her mind set on God. When she told God, she had faith in God. She was healed immediately. She had her mind set on God. And let me ask you, what would you have done if you seen that, if you were there? Those people probably thought, well, I need to get my mind set on God. If you get your mind set on God, he can touch you. He can work things. If you just praise him and live for him, if you get everything else that has been distracting you out of your mind and just get God on your mind, something's going to happen. Let me say that again. If you get everything else, there's the distraction and everything out of your mind and put God first. Put God, the only thing in your mind, just for a little bit. If you put mind on your God, if you put God on your mind, something's going to happen. That woman was healed immediately after 12 years of having that issue of blood. She had her mind set on God. And then Luke, I want to go, I want to go back a little bit. Not Luke 8, but Luke chapter 7, verse 36. It says, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner." And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, 
But see hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. This woman, this sinner, when they were sitting down and eating, she, she walked in, she heard that Jesus was going to be in there. And so she walked in there with this box of ointment. And she, and she started to put it on Jesus' feet and started to dry his feet with her hair and started kissing him on his feet. And these people were thinking, you know, what is she doing? Why is she doing this? She had her mind set on God. She was a sinner. And these people were talking to Jesus, and they were wondering what she was doing. You know, they were wondering why she was doing that. But she had her mind set on God. And in verse 45, it says, Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, and hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Even while Jesus was talking, she still was down there, kissing his feet. He, if we go back and look, he, says, he said, Thou gave me no water to wash my feet. But she was, the sinner was washing, the sinner woman was washing Jesus' feet with ointment. And Jesus said, thou giveth me not one kiss, no kiss. But this woman, ever since she's been in here, ever since this woman has been in here, she has not stopped, she has not ceased kissing my feet. These men were sitting there. They had not knelt down and kissed Jesus' feet. They had not washed his feet. And this sinner woman had come in and started to kiss his feet. And she had not stopped the whole time. And with that being said, if we become like those, these men, sometimes, you know, distractions will get in our mind. And we can be just like these people. We could forget how important God is. We could forget. We could give him. Like he said, they gave him no water. They were distracted. They were talking. They were eating. They gave him no kiss. Their mind was in another place. But this woman, this sinner woman, just walked off the streets and started to wash Jesus' feet and started to kiss it with ointment. Her mind was set on God. And we could be like those men that are sitting there. We could, today, we could be like them sitting in, you know, the pew, the chairs. And we could, our mind could be somewhere else. And we, we might just be sitting back, you know, we might be distracted. And this sinner walk in and get more praise. They start praising and worshiping God more than us. Their mind is set on God more than us. Well, it says they were sitting there. They were eating, talking with Jesus. They had not washed his feet once. They had not kissed him once, but this woman had not stopped kissing him. In verse 46, it says, My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Thy faith have saved thee. Go in peace. They had not anointed him. They had not washed his feet. They had not given him no kiss. But this woman, just off the streets, came in and started, her mind was on God more than these people that were sitting down talking to Jesus. I want to be like that woman coming in. I want to be like that woman today. I want to be like her, having my mind set on God. I don't want nothing to get in the way to where I forget to wash God's feet. I, I don't want to forget who God is. 
I want to be like that woman today. She had her mind set on God. And because she had her mind set on God, her sins were forgiven. I think she left more with something that day than them Pharisees, than them people sent with Jesus. They didn't have anything after they left. But that woman had something extra. That woman had her mind set on God. She left with something. But them people sitting and talking with God, eating with God, they had nothing. Because they had forgotten to do all that. They had forgotten because their minds were not on God. But that woman that had her mind on God was forgiven of her sins. She had her mind on God. I want to be like her today. I want to be like all of these people that I've talked about. Having our mind set on God. If your mind is set on God, something will happen. If your mind is set on God, if you just come in here when we're having church, if you just forget about, if we forget about ourselves, we forget about everything. We, if we forget about something, if, if someone has offended us, the offenses, if we forget about them, and we come in here and put our mind on God, if we just put our mind on God today, and we come in to the church, do you think you'll leave with something extra? We won't leave the way, we won't leave the same way we came. We'll leave with something extra. We'll leave not being the same person. Why? Because we had our mind set on God. We didn't have our mind set on anything else. We had our mind set on God. Our mind. Keeping our minds on God. Your mind. You decide what happens in your mind. You decide what you want in your mind. And I choose to have God in my mind. I don't care what other people think. I choose to have God. They can have sports. They can have whatever they want in their mind. I want to have God in my mind. I want to keep my mind on God today. I want to keep my mind on God today. I know that if I do, then something's good going to happen. Something good is going to happen. I won't leave the same way that I came. I want to be like those people. He said, Thy faith have saved thee. Go out in peace. Go in peace. They left with a touch from God because they had kept their minds on God. And I want to read one last verse of Scripture from Luke chapter 19, verse 40. And it says, and he answered and said unto them, them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, these stones would immediately cry out. If we stop praising God, what would you do if you seen that? If you just let your mind wander off and you just forgot about God, what would you do if the rock started to cry out to God? You would see that your mind had wandered off and forgotten all about God. And, you know, I, I just ask myself, how would that be possible? How could you forget about God? He's the one that died on the cross. How could you forget about God? I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to let a rock take my place in praising God. I'm going to say that again. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let no rock take my place. And worshiping God and walking with God. My mind is set on God. That rock isn't going to take my glory. That rock isn't going to take the thing that I'm going to get from God. I'm going to take whatever God has for me. That blessing that he has for me. I'm going to take it because my mind is going to be set on God. I want to keep on praising him. Because my mind, I I know. And I want to keep my mind on God today. The Bible says anything with breath can praise him. The rocks have no breath. They can't praise him. But if those rocks start to praise him, what would you think if you seen that? If you seen a rock praising him and getting more than what you had? 
What would that look like? I don't want to know what it would look like. Kind of creepy. But still, I'm not going to let a rock take my place tonight. I want my mind to be set on God. My mind is set on God tonight. How about yours? Are you keeping your mind on God? I just wanted to talk about this tonight. About keeping your mind on God. Is your mind on God tonight? Are you going to keep your mind on God? Don't let your mind wander off. Don't forget who God is. He can heal anybody. He can touch people that have been through so much. He can heal the sick. I just love God today. Let us all stand here. I just love God. I just want to remember who He is. And I just want to keep my mind on God tonight. Let's love the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Almighty God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord for your word tonight Lord Jesus thank you for your word tonight Lord praise God praise God you know I was thinking while he was preaching some of you may not uh agree with this but I believe that pastoring a church is one of the hardest jobs in the world and I say that with experience and um, the reason I say it's hard because it's not necessarily hard physically and so but I see people from a different perspective than what everybody else sees people I see everybody's failures. I see everybody's weaknesses. People talk to me about their problems. And then I see people do things and I wonder why they're doing the things you're doing. Hello? And it could be real discouraging and I could allow that to distract me. But you know what? I keep my mind on Jesus. And, if, and I believe if God's people can all learn to keep their mind on Jesus because if we get to looking around, you know what? You're going to realize that everybody here's got failures. Everybody here's got problems, including me, including you, we all. But you know, that's why we're in church. Because only He can make a difference in our lives. We've got to keep our mind on the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Aaron, for preaching.